Ketu transits to its next nakshatra of Hasta, and that's going to have a very important impact on us. That's what I talk about today. Hello everybody, I'm Tina Chaudhary. Welcome to my channel and a very warm Namaste. Aham Brahmasmi. Before I even begin talking about the transit of uh, Ketu and Tahasta, I want to apologize to all my viewers. I have not made a video on the March predictions. You notice I haven't made a video for a very long time. I have not been feeling well, so I'm sorry that I skipped that video. Um, but I do want to take this opportunity of this video to wish all my viewers that have March birthdays a very, very happy birthday. So people that have birthdays, all my viewers, my audience that has birthdays in March, a very happy birthday. I hope all your wishes and dreams get filled this year. And um, may my divine and your divine bless you with lots of happiness health and prosperity this year your new year for you so a very happy birthday to all the people with march birthdays on march 4th ketu will transit into the new nakshatra of hasta it stays in hasta until november 10th so when we consider the transit dates for both ketu and rahu there are always two different dates um, there is the mean node transit and then there is the true node transit. Based on the true node, uh, node calculation, the transit has already occurred on February 7th, but based on the mean node transit calculation, that will, the transit will occur on March 3rd. Now, does it really matter which node transit we take into account? Well, in my experience, uh, not really. I've noticed that we start to see the impact as soon as the true node transit has occurred. So let's talk about the specifics of um, the Ketu transit into Hasta. Now Ketu had transited uh, to the zodiac of Virgo in November 2023 and at that time it was in the nakshatra of Chitra. Now Chitra is ruled by Mars. So Ketu has been giving us its impact via Mars which means that Ketu's impact on us was very dependent on the condition as well as the transit of Mars. But now Ketu is going to transit in the nakshatra of Hasta. Hasta is ruled by the moon. So it's going to stay in Virgo, but its impact will now be uh, based on the condition and the transit of the moon. And for this, we need to understand this nakshatra of Hasta first. So the name or word Hasta means hands. The ruling deity of this nakshatra is uh, Savitra. The Hindus may recognize this name Savitar from the very popular Gayatri mantra whose second line is Tat Savitar. Now Savitar is actually another name of the sun god. So he's supposed to have these beautiful golden hands. But the symbol of Hasta is a closed fist. This fist or uh, hands represent the endless gains that are possible when we work with our hands to do whatever work we have chosen to do in our lives. This closed fist represents several things. Firstly, it represents what we are holding in our hands as our gains. It represents the strength of the clenched fist and it also represents what we keep hidden or out of sight from the rest of the world. So basically, when you combine all these things, Hasta simply represents that the strength of our destiny and prosperity is linked to the work that we do with our hands. It could also relate to any profession. So it, it means that a doctor does surgery with their hands, a chef cooks with their hands, an IT professional types on the keyboard with their hands. That's what it kind of means. But because it carries the energy of both the luminaries, the sun and the moon, it signifies a lot of healing energy. So it represents healers and medical practitioners also. Here's an interesting tidbit. People with prominent hasta nakshatra in their birth charts could have very fidgety hands. So what happens when Ketu goes into Hasta? Remember, Hasta is ruled by the moon and uh, the moon is our mind, our emotions, our thoughts. And all these are functions of our brain or our head. But Ketu is only the lower body of the demon because the head of the demon went with Rahu. So the energy of the moon doesn't really synchronize well with that of Ketu. They don't match with each other. They don't have matching energies because the one is all about the head and the other one doesn't even have a head. 
So this transit is a bit of a challenge for all of us. Secondly, Hasta is in the zodiac of Virgo, which is ruled by Mercury. And Mercury represents our intelligence and our communication skills. Again, we have the similar issue that Mercury and energy will not synchronize well with each other. Again, the head and the body issue. So finally, what we end up with is frustrations and our inability to make decisions and express ourselves. We may go through a period of confusion about how to proceed forward in almost all aspects of our life, whether it's career or relationships. Also, we may get very critical and sarcastic of others and say things without thinking. That's the nature of Virgo. So the best way to handle this combination is to rely on your intuition because that's going to be very much heightened at this time. Don't do anything impulsively and definitely don't say things to others without careful consideration first. Now, the chance of damaging relationships is very high at this time because you're saying stuff you don't mean. This transit obviously would impact those individuals that are going through any dashas of Ketu moon or Mercury the most. So everyone doesn't feel the same impact with the same in intensity. The impact uh, someone has of any planetary transit also depends on the condition of the involved planets in their own birth chart. So that's always the most important uh, factor you have to take into consideration. So now I'm going to do some general predictions. So you can listen based on your ascendant, which is also called the rising um, sign or Lagna. And if you don't know your rising sign, I have the link to a website in the description box that you can click, enter your birth details, and it will calculate your Vedic birth chart. You can see my sample up here that shows how to read it. It will be different from the rising sign calculated based on Western astrology. So don't be alarmed or think there's an error because there's usually off by one zodiac sign. So here's my sample up here and you can see which, where, how you can see your ascendant. I'm gonna show it. Predictions for Aries. Aries, Ketu is in your sixth house and Cancer ruled by Moon is your fourth house. So you will have the combined impact of houses four and six. Now the fourth house indicates mental and domestic happiness. It also signifies real estate transactions and real estate matters. The fourth house also signifies your mother. Now the sixth house signifies challenges such as your health, financial loans and debts and competition also signifies enemies and your daily routine. This is a time you need to take care of your emotions and nurture your mental happiness. You become extra sensitive during this time regarding the words of others and you may feel like others are criticizing you or picking on you. Try not to interpret all communication that's directed at you with that approach. Everybody is not criticizing you. You may be tempted to purchase real estate and take on high loans and debts. Be aware of how much you're able to afford comfortably and definitely don't take impulsive decisions regarding financial matters, especially purchase of real estate. Watch your communication with your mother. Don't get into arguments or fights with her. There is also a chance of uh, any toxic relationships in your life that are going to break during this time. Don't get too upset over it. You need to understand that if something is breaking during this time, that relationship was probably toxic and didn't mean or have value in your life or doesn't need to go forward with you in your life at this time. For some of you, if you're looking for a job or a job change, you need to be extra innovative and become very focused and uh, chances of job changes are very possible during this time for Aries. This phase also indicates that your daily routine and schedule could change quite a bit. It could be due to changes in your home environment or it could even be due to health reasons. Certainly, this is a time to take care of your health and the best remedy to take care of your health at this time is to have a very regimented physical exercise workout regimen. Now, this could be light yoga, going for a daily walk or going to the gym, whatever suits your body type and lifestyle. This is actually a time for new starts in your life. These new starts could relate to how you handle your career or a new job, or it could also be related to how you handle your health going forward. Or the new start could mean the end of a relationship or a love relationship or the start of a new one. Predictions for Taurus. 
Taurus, for you, Ketu, is transiting in the fifth house, and the house of Cancer, that's ruled by the moon, is the third house. Now, the fifth house represents all the pleasant and happy things in our lives, such as our children, love life, good health, education, and doing things that bring us enjoyment, such as our hobbies. The third house is our courage and communication and siblings as well as short troubles. The positive impact of this transit is that your creativity and ability to come up with innovative ideas will be at its peak. All those individuals in creative and artistic fields, this is a very, very favorable time for you. Explore new out-of-the-box ideas and put them into practice. Now understand you will have to work very hard first and then you will see very very good favorable results for yourselves. On the other side there can be changes in the nature of your relationships especially love relationships. Um, I don't mean marriage at this time just for love relationships and also relationships with your children. Of course, if you have children. Now, the reason for that will be your own communication. You may have a tendency to be overly picky, judgmental, and sometimes sarcastic. Now, if you can avoid this behavior, your relationships can go through this uh, transit very undamaged. This is also a time when you need to take a lot of new initiatives and have the confidence to start any new ventures or projects that you have been delaying. This is the energy of the third house. So this is a time where you need to put in the effort and you can put forward and start anything that you've been delaying in the past. Also make sure that you maintain positive relationships with your mother and that she's also taking very good care of her health. Some Taurus may feel a little bit dissatisfied in terms of of their financial expectations. But Taurus is having very high expectations, extra high expectations at this time, due to the fact that Rahu is in the 11th house. So it's time to be realistic about your material expectations. Not that your uh, what you get is gonna be less, but your expectations are a little bit maybe unrealist unrealistic at this time, so manage your expectations accordingly. You may also end up with very high expenses at this time, so make sure you manage your expenses this time as well. Also make sure you have some realistic expectation in terms of your love life, because if you have those unrealistic expectations from your partner, your love partner, then there could be some breakage in that love in your love relationship as well. So make sure you manage your expectations from your partner at this time. Don't be very unrealistic in what you expect them to do for you. Now the last word, but very important word of caution I have for uh, Taurus is about signing any kind of agreement or document. You need to be very sure, double check all documents and agreements prior to making any financial commitments. Prediction for Gemini. Gemini, for you, Ketu is transiting in your fourth house, and Cancer, that is ruled by the moon, is your second house. Now, the fourth house um, governs your mental peace and domestic happiness, as well as real estate matters. The second house rules finance and family and your speech. This is a transit when you feel mentally very fatigued upset and even go through periods of frustration and this will be the result of financial issues and or your domestic matters it could also relate to some family issues that are um, that you may be going through at this time for some gemini's it could be related to even real estate matters now i have already predicted in my past rahu ketu videos that a lot of gemini's will relocate during this 18 month transit of the rahu ketu that commenced last year in november 2023 so basically now's the time when this stress of the relocation or whatever's going on domestically will be at its peak for gemini where matters of your home and domestic environment really disrupt your mental peace, your mood, and may also start to impact your relationships with your family members more than ever before. Those individuals that are involved in any type of business um, that is related to anything to do with real estate or construction business, uh, there could be some financial challenges during this transit. I would also counsel you to uh, make sure you take extra care to maintain a very positive relationship with your mother. Avoid arguing and fighting with her. For those Geminis that get involved in real estate deals or actually any other deals, check out all your information very carefully. The chance of, of getting into fraud or is very high due to the placement of Rahu Ketu. 
if you are going to purchase a home during this entire Rahu Ketu transit, there could be some hidden problems in that real estate that may not be very visible at the first look. So make sure you check out all real estate very carefully before you actually uh, make a permanent commitment to purchase it. The second house also signifies your speech. You can actually avoid all these problems if you're able to manage your words. What you say, how you say, and to whom you're saying is very important. So basically, think before you speak and you can avoid most of the problems that I'm mentioning. If you are able to control your words, a lot of these issues that may come up can actually be avoided altogether. Now, I certainly don't mean to scare Gemini's. My basic guidance to you is that watch what you're saying and you will also need to work harder and more cautiously now compared to the previous transit of Rahu and Ketu in order to see the same favorable uh, results as you saw previously. So just be prepared for that. That's all. Nothing to be scared of. Predictions for Cancer. Cancer Ketu is transiting in your third house and of course for you moon is your ascendant ruler so it basically rules your physical body, your health, mind and emotions and your behavior also your physical appearance. Now the third house is the house of courage and determination also your siblings and short travels but most importantly it represents your communication. So this transit is one of hard work, lots of dedication and effort to see results in almost all areas of your life. You will need to make an extra effort to maintain good health and not take it for granted. In fact, you will also need to pay a lot of attention to your communication style so your relationships also don't get damaged. Due to the hard work, you may be very stressed and feel a lack of energy, which in turn may cause you to lose your patience with family members, especially siblings, both your parents and those people that are close to you. Now, this is a time when you cannot take others for granted. In fact, you must be extra tolerant of others or there can be permanent damage in these relationships based on how you communicate with them. The third house is like I said, it's primarily of communication. So it's all kinds of written and verbal communication. So you also need to be very cautious about your communication in the workplace. In fact, you need to watch how you send out your emails in the workplace because if you don't word them appropriately, you could initiate something very negative in your career as well. Make an extra effort to maintain good relationships with your mother and also take very good care of her health as well. Now for Cancer, already you have Saturn in your 8th house which is called Ashtama Shani which is causing a lot of concern in uh, Cancer's careers. Some, A lot of Cancers have lost their jobs, they're looking for new jobs or they may be very dissatisfied in their jobs and if none of the above then Cancer is extremely overworked in their jobs. So they need to be very careful during this K2 transit to make sure that they balance their emotions, their stress and also maintain a very good work-life balance and their emotional health. The last thing they need is to start communicating in a bad way in the workplace with colleagues, with family members, because of the fact that they may be overworked and they may have stress due to their careers. So this is a time when cancer needs to take very good care of their emotional health and their physical body. Also make an extra effort to not damage your relationship with your siblings. As an extra caution, if you do short travels, double check you have all your belongings and whatever else you need on your trip. Don't forget anything at home. And while you are traveling, don't lose any of your items. Be very careful about trusting strangers on your short trips and stay away from unsafe places. Don't mean to scare you, just a word of caution. Predictions for Leo. For Leo, K2 is transiting in the second house and uh, Cancer ruled by the moon is their 12th house. Both the second and 12th houses are primarily finance related houses. So the second house is savings and family, but the 12th house represents the exact opposite, which is expenses, losses, and also isolation and privacy, but it also represents spirituality and foreign travel. Now, this is a time to maintain peace and harmony within the family structure. And I even mean extended family, including in-laws and relatives. Now, your speech should stay humble and polite. Otherwise, there are chances of relationships being damaged due to something that you could say very innocently or inadvertently. 
and it can be interpreted differently by the person that you're talking to. So make sure that what you're saying, you think before you speak. Otherwise, there is chances of relationship damage at this time, even though you don't mean to damage the relationship. Make sure your family is with you and their love and their support is with you for you during this transit. That is most important and critical for you. It is a very favorable time for those Leos that are looking to relocate to a different country or a foreign country. You can get good financial gains or benefits from overseas affiliations. Those Leos um, that have careers where they deal with overseas or foreign companies, and this is a very favorable time as far as growth and finance is concerned. It is also a good time to get a job in a foreign country if that is what you were interested in. And uh, on the flip side, this is also a time of high expenses. You will be required to spend money on family matters. Whether you like it or not, you're going to be expected to spend it. Also, there can be heavy expenses related to entertainment, travel, and food. So become aware of that and manage your finances accordingly. Um, there's a very high chance of foreign travel during this Kedu transit in Hasta for the Leo individuals. My other caution for Leos is to take care of your diet or the food that you eat. There is a chance of consuming spoiled food or consuming food that may have gone bad without you becoming aware of it. During this transit, Leos will become very food conscious and prefer to eat only healthy, maybe sometimes only fresh vegetables and green leafy vegetables. But be very careful about cleanliness of the food prior to consuming any food items. There's a chance that you consume something bad and there could impact your digestion during this time. Predictions for Virgo. Virgo for you this transit has very special meaning because Ketu is transiting in your own ascendant house. And Cancer ruled by the moon is your 11th house. So the ascendant house represents your physical body, your health, your behavior, mood, mind, and way of thinking. Now the 11th house is representing material gains, wish fulfillment, your social circle, and also your older siblings as well. Now this transit ch um, change is a very positive one for Virgo Ascendants compared to the prior nakshatra that Ketu was transiting in because that was ruled by Mars, which is a very challenging one for Virgo. So this is a time that is much better improved compared to the prior nakshatra transit for Ketu for Virgo. You now become focused on material gains and how you can improve your financial situation. In fact, any financial delays or challenges you were facing previously now seem to disappear and there can be very good financial recovery during this transit. The caution you need to take is regarding your interaction within your social and professional network. Make sure that you don't do or say anything that impacts your image in their eyes. Maintain your self-respect and if there were any toxic people in your life, may, you may feel that you no longer want to associate with them. On the other hand, do your best to maintain positive relationships with those friends that you value and if you need any assistance from them, reach out to them and they can be of great benefit to you. This is a time to let go of ego and attitude and after May, you will experience a fresh start in your life where the challenging matters and toxic relationships are left behind and a positive new phase can start for you. The flip side is that this is now a time to take care of your health. And if you do, you can see improvements in your health. So the last word of caution is take care of your health as far as infections are concerned. The infections could especially be related to your ear, nose, and somewhere around the mouth area. Because K2 is in the first house, the first house relates to the head area. You also need to take care of your uh, diet and what you're eating because there's a chance of having digestive issues during this time as well because of the fact that Saturn is in the sixth house. So watch what you eat. Take care that you don't have any infections around your, especially your ears and nose. And this should be a much better transit for you compared to the last several months. Prediction for Libra. Libra Ketu is transiting in your 12th house and for you Cancer ruled by Moon is your 10th house of career and status. The 12th house represents expenses, losses, isolation, foreign travel, but it also mainly represents spirituality. Now here comes a phase where expenses will be quite high and there could be 
actually related to either home related expenses or travel related expenses. This spending could actually be quite sudden, impulsive and unforeseen. So be prepared for it, but definitely become aware of the fact that you're going to be prone to impulsive purchasing. Those individuals that have careers that involve foreign trading, overseas affiliations, uh, travel, logistics or transport will be very busy, but will also do very well. There can even be some changes for them in their careers. If you own a business related to export import, there are chances of excellent financial gains as well as business growth. In fact, some Libras may also travel to a foreign country during this transit. This is also a time when Libra may be drawn towards spirituality and may even visit religious places or travel for religious purposes. In fact, my guidance to Libra is that in, if they spend time or make an effort to do any spiritual activity, it could be very beneficial for their careers as well as their mental peace, happiness and even their health. So the spiritual pursuits could be a chanting some mantras, visiting their favorite church or temple or meditating for a few minutes a day. Now the best remedy for Libra is uh, to if you, they want to manage any financial challenges uh, they experience during this transit is to make donations of food. Now however small the donation and whoever they make it to that's immaterial but normally it can be you know any donation to any needy person however small the donation be. Because the 12th house represents expenses and losses Anybody that's having any issues with high expenses or losses, the best remedy for the 12th house is to make a donation because a donation is also considered an expense, but it's a good expense. So Libras, if you are experiencing any financial issues with very high unmanageable uh, expenses, it's a very good idea to make some donations and also pursue some spirituality. So Libra, if you're having any kind of challenges with your health or with high financial unmanageable expenses, the best remedy would be to donate food and also to be very spiritual or follow some spiritual pursuits. Predictions for Scorpio. Scorpio for you, Ketu, is transiting in the 11th house and Cancer that is ruled by the moon is your 9th house. Now the 11th house represents material gains, uh, wishes and desires. Also it represents your network and social circle. The 9th house is your house of spirituality, your dharma, your destiny, good luck and also your father. This is a very positive time for you as far as financial opportunities are concerned. Now this is especially true for those individuals that are dealing with um, foreign countries, foreign companies or individuals that are um, foreigners. This in fact if you have any uh, professional or network connections that are in foreign countries or are foreign individuals they will be of great help and support to you and also maybe financially beneficial to you as well at this time. Luck is on your side because the moon rules your house of good luck and karma. My guidance for you is to remain on very positive terms with your father. Remain honest and pure in all your business dealings. When an element of dishonesty comes into this transit or in your behavior, this can actually damage the good luck factor for you at this time. So make sure you're staying very true, very honest in all your business dealings. No scams, no shortcuts. Don't do anything like that because it can actually ruin all that positivity that this transit is bringing for you. On the other hand, you also need to be very careful about how you treat your friends. There's a, a chance that there's too much ego or arrogance that you have and that has the possibility of losing key friends at this time as well. In fact, um, this is when you also see who your true well-wishers are as opposed to people that are simply with you for their own benefit. Be cautious with your investments. Don't get scammed by people that promise or give you a financial advice, promising you know lots of good things happening. Um, use your own judgment. There could be a chance that somebody tries to um, scam you or tries to give you financial advice that's probably not as good for you as they make it out to be. On the other side, this is a good time to start bringing some spirituality into your life. Now, even though the material world seems to be quite attractive and satisfying, you know, you're probably making good financial uh, money, you probably have good income this time, but you will need to follow some path of spirituality right now because you're going to need it for your own mental peace and happiness. You could try some meditation or mantra chanting 
or just simply visiting a favorite um, religious uh, institution like a church or a temple. Also, if you follow any spiritual gurus, then stay very close to the spiritual gurus. And the other thing that I have to mention is stay very close to your father. Don't get into fights with him and make sure you get his love and blessings at all times. Staying spiritual, you know, pure hearted is going to be the key to your good luck factor during this transit. Lastly, be cautious about who your new social contacts are. Don't trust too quickly or too easily. Also, if you're single, there is a chance of finding a new partner at this time. In fact, there's even a chance of someone from your past coming back into your life, especially if you felt some sh uh, karmic connection with them in the past. You may have that person come back in your life at this time if you try hard. Predictions for Sagittarius. Sagittarius for you, K2 is transiting in your 10th house and for you, Cancer ruled by the moon is your 8th house. Now the 10th house is your house of career and profession, but the 8th house is a challenging one. It's not a favorite of astrologers because it has the element of suddenness as well as unforeseen events. It could signify obstacles in health or even in financial matters. Now this transit is going to be a little tricky for you because there may be few obstacles and delays in your profession or your career. In fact, those Sagittarius that were waiting for new developments in their careers may have to wait just a little bit longer. Also, you may have to deal with a lot of responsibility at work. You may also feel lots of mental stress as a result of that overwork and overburden. You also need to stay very alert and be very careful at work. Don't rock the boat. The bigger issue that Sagittarius deals with is that after uh, May of this year, your ascendant ruler Jupiter transits to your sixth house, which also adds to a little bit of the concern, and that is as far as health and both finance um, is concerned. So health can also get a little tricky where there can be sudden issues um, that come up. Just become very aware of your health, and as soon as you experience any issues, go get it checked out. Don't take your health for granted. And the other thing is that after May, just be very careful that you also don't get injured because um, both the sixth and the eighth house planets, houses have planets in them. So there's a chance of maybe some injury, you know, that could happen suddenly when, you know, if you're not cautious. Certainly don't mean to scare you. All I'm saying is just have an element of, of um, caution around you when you're doing risky things like working out or driving or something like that. Just, just be, you know, operate with care. Now, there are several Sagittarius that may have already relocated or may relocate during this Rahu Kedu transit that started um, May of 2023 last year. It goes till almost the mid of two 2025. So most, um, a lot of Sagittarians will relocate during this phase. So if you're already in the process of relocating, you may be experiencing some annoying delays that are going to cause you some mental stress. Now for others, uh, the Sagittarius, there could possibly be some real estate issues that are causing uh, tension or stress that uh, contribute to a lack of domestic harmony. So that's something you need to be very careful about, be watchful about as well. Um, this is not a good time to start picking fights or arguments with all of the important people in your life, especially your mother, father, and spouse. And definitely watch and take care of your mother's health during this transit as well. Also maintain very cordial and professional relationships with your co-workers. Like I said, your career is um, a little bit uh, going to be a little bit unstable after May um, and June. So you definitely don't need to ruin your relationships with your co-workers. Sagittarius, I certainly didn't mean to scare you, but my basic guidance to you would be just keep your head down, work hard, work with patience, maintain good health habits, and it's a short transit. So don't worry about anything. Predictions for Capricorn. Capricorn K2 transits in your ninth house and for you Cancer that is ruled by the moon is your seventh house. The ninth house represents your destiny, good luck, your dharma and spirituality. Also it is the house of long distance travel and it represents your father. The seventh house is about partnerships like marriage and spouse and even your business partnerships. During this phase Capricorn feels the need to follow spirituality, their dharma and their religion. Capricorn has had such a tough time, so now they feel like they need some peace in their lives. So they are trying or turning to spirituality. And when they do that, this will activate a lot of positivity in their life. K2 
Ketu denotes spirituality and it does very well in the ninth house. So now Capricorn can expect some relief compared to the previously troubling transit of Ketu in the Mars nakshatra. This is a very welcome transit for Capricorn. All your partnerships improve. Yes, even with your spouse that you were having maybe some difficulty with, now your relationship can expect to improve. You may enjoy a better relationship with your spouse. If you're in business, you may actually enjoy a better relationship with your business partner. In fact, you may even form new partnerships at this time. Due to the fact that Rahu is in the third house for Capricorn, some Capricorns may be thinking about starting or initiating new ventures, projects, or even businesses. This is now an excellent time to form a new business partnership and proceed forward with that idea. There is a chance marriage for the single Capricorn as well because the seventh house is getting activated in a very beautiful, positive, uh, good luck factor. Some Capricorns may actually even go on long journeys for religious purposes and they may come up suddenly without planning for some of them. Some Capricorns may even travel for educational purposes and if they get the opportunity for this any of travel of this kind which is whether spiritual or for educational purposes, make sure you grab the chance and don't pass up on it. Capricorn, for you, I'm strongly recommending doing some good spiritual activities um, to activate your luck factor. Now, these could be meditation, mantra ch chanting, or even visiting your favorite church or temple. Make sure that if you have a spiritual guru or a spiritual teacher, you stay very close to them. Also, if you're lucky enough to have a father in your life, make sure you stay very, very close to that father and um, get their blessings and their love every day in your life in order to activate it, activate this luck factor. All of these things will be of immense benefit um, to you during this transit. Prediction for Aquarius. Aquarius K2 transits in your 8th house and for you Cancer ruled by the moon is your 6th house. Both the 6th and the 8th houses are the least favorite of the astrologers because they represent the challenges of our life. The 6th represents health matters, debts and loans, lawsuits, competition and our daily routine. The 8th house carries the element of sudden or unforeseen events. These events are karmic and may sometimes test us. For you Aquarius, this is a period of mental unrest. You will worry about absolutely everything. Even things that don't need your require your concern or worry, you're going to worry about them. Basically, you will lack mental peace and you will feel restless for no real reason. Some Aquarius may constantly worry about their financial situation, their loans and debts. Some of you will worry about your legal issues if you have any of them. And others simply are so preoccupied with their own health that they actually create more stress from themselves. Basically, Aquarius will find any and all reasons to worry about and in that entire process, they ruin their own health from the stress that they create for themselves. This is also a time that could be expensive for Aquarius and you may end up making poor financial choices resulting in wastage or overspending of money. You need to manage and nurture your relationships with your mother. Now that is going to be very critical and also the key to your good luck because the moon represents your mother. So you need to be very careful about not damaging your relationship with her. Also take care of your mother's health during this transit. This is not a good time to fight with her or get into arguments with her. That will ruin your entire luck factor at this time. The good impact is that if you are offered any opportunities from overseas companies or if you are engaged or employed in a career that works with foreign entities or companies that are working or are working with them, then this could be very beneficial for you. Also, if you desire to work in a foreign country, then this is an excellent time for you to pursue that dream. Overall, I don't mean to scare you, but basically my guidance is to take care of your health Try not to get stressed for no reason and handle your finances very wisely. Prediction for Pisces. Pisces Ketu is in your seventh house and Cancer ruled by Moon is your fifth house. Now the seventh house signifies all partnerships like your marriage and spouse and also business partnerships. Now the fifth house is your children, your love life, education, your creativity and your happiness and the fun things in your life. 
So this is a time when you will need to be very careful about all your relationships, especially the one with your spouse. Rahu is already in your ascendant house, so you may already be going through a period of confusion and unrealistic expectations from others and even from you know life in general with things in general. You may be prone to making unwise choices regarding your own health. Um, if you are not eating healthy then you, or maintaining healthy habits, then definitely make the necessary changes at this time. You need to do that. This is not a time to either make unrealistic demands from your spouse. In fact, you may even start to feel a certain kind of a disconnect from them due to various reasons at this time. Remind yourself that it could possibly be you that needs to change um, as well to maintain a good relationship. So it's not fair that you may always ask your spouse or your partner that they need to make changes and you need to you know, introspect at this time, reflect and see what are some of the changes that you can make into maintaining a very positive relationship. It happens very frequently that when Ketu is in the seventh house, a person tries to almost feel disconnected in the marital relationship and that is probably something that's happening for you and you may be feeling that it's because of the other person that's creating a problem but it's sometimes it could be you. Also, there could be some difficulty with business partners as well. And you may experience some financial troubles in your business if you are a business owner. So make all and any financial decisions very carefully at this time. Maintain a positive relationship with your children because the fifth house does signify children. Don't criticize them or um, and watch your communication with them at all times. Um, you know, as a parent, we like to tell things to our children and say they're doing things wrong. But at this time, you need to tell them what they're doing right. Otherwise, there could be permanent damage in relationships with your children. If you are in a love relationship, you also need to treat that relationship with great care. Remember, positive communication and over expectations are key. So don't fall into that trap. Um, I know I'm saying some things that are negative, but as long as you are making the effort into maintaining the positivity in all your relationships, uh, this transit can be okay for you. If you feel and you put the burden of maintaining relationships on other people at this time, the transit may not work as well for you and you may damage some relationships along the way. Um, so basically what I'm saying is you need to put the effort into maintaining positive relationships. Students may feel loss of focus and interest in their studies, so they're going to have to need to work extra hard. Daily mantra chanting is a very, very good remedy for all Pisces uh, during this transit. And it could be any mantra that you like or it's one of your favorites. It could be any religion, any faith, whatever you like, it will work. And with this, I come to the end of my video. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Take very good care of yourselves. Good luck, and I will see you on one of my future videos. Goodbye for now.